Welcome back everybody, I'm Big Mac Davis here, and this is finally more Doom 64, the 100% walkthrough for the PC, played through Steam on the Watch Me Die difficulty setting. This is Map 10, The Bleeding. Who is going to be bleeding? Doom Guy or the Demons? I guess we'll find out. We start in a room with a chainsaw and a regular shotgun. Now what's funny, if you pick up the shotgun, it will spawn a backpack and two boxes of shells, so make sure you do that. Now when you open up either one of the two doors, it will cause both of them to open up with a bunch of imps beyond both of them. So what I do is I just use the trusty old regular shotgun. Since they're fairly well spread out, it works out better this way. Just go from door to door, sniping off all the imps until all of them are dead. Now, we'll face the pillars that has the chain gun beyond them and go left through the door and then left again to some boxes of rockets. Now when you go down the other way we have a secret super shotgun but also a secret berserk pack. So make sure you grab both of these items. And we'll do the same thing for the other side as well. Oh! Oh gosh, too many pinkies. Um, I guess they're on a timer. I didn't, uh, I thought, like in all of my practice runs, these pinkies would spawn. But when I was on the other side over there, they would spawn, not when I'm in the center of the room like this. Oh yeah, so many jibs. That's interesting, so... They may be on a timer. Good to know. Now on the other side, we'll go to the left and get some energy cell packs, but yet again, on the other side, we have a secret plasma gun, so make sure you grab that in the alcove. At this point in time is when the pinkies would have spawned, so if they don't spawn right away like they did for me, they'll spawn right now and you can just use the Berserk or the Chainsaw on them. The pillars have lowered down so we can grab the chain gun and all of the ammo around here if you need it. We can't go to the back side of this area yet because of more pillars. So we'll go through the door for some Nightmare Imps. When you step in the room, the room changes and leads up to two switches. But we'll approach the alcove at the end and then back up for a secret Mega Armor. Now up here we are trapped, but this switch will lower us down, but we'll face the switch and turn left and press on the panel to open up a secret rocket launcher. And now we'll lower back down. We'll press both of the switches in this room. And we can snipe off two Hell Knights from down here. One on the left and one on the right. I just rock back and forth so as not to get hit by the other Hell Knight behind me. So facing where we got the Mega Armor, we'll go to the right up the stairs because we have one more Hell Knight to kill. And there's nothing up here but a shish kebab of a head and some health here if you need it. We'll go up the other side for another Hell Knight. A nether! Except this time up here, there is more health if you need it. And also, another shish kebab of a head. But also a switch. 
So what I do is I press the switch and stay up here. This will cause a bunch of enemies down below to spawn. I stay up here for as long as I can because also a bunch of mancubi spawn on the bottom level. If you have the semi-upgraded Unmaker from previous maps, you can use it. And it just eats through the mancubi. I just let them come to me, single file. The other one's kind of being lethargic and not wanting to come to me. There should also be a Mancubus. Yeah, there he is, down below. He's just not wanting to die. There we go. So we'll drop down now, we'll equip the chain gun, and we'll just butcher through all the smaller enemies, and then just rocket launcher whatever mancubi may be left. It is now very quiet. Oh no, I said the Q word. So what we're going to do, this door has now opened up, or the area to this door has now opened up. What we're going to do is circle around the island, if you will, and just gather up all of the supplies that we may need, if you need them, which I do, so I will get it. Okay, so back in the starting room, there is a there is a non-secret supercharge that has opened up a big old blueberry so now about the new area that has opened up here we'll go through it but we want to be careful this is a lost soul haven we have one lost soul who appears and if you stay here long enough you can coax down some of the lost souls from up above in the two alcoves which I like to do, if it's possible anyway. Looks like they may be stuck. By the way, oh, you still you can exit this room. At some point this door does become locked. No it doesn't. I'm thinking of another place. Sorry about that. Here comes at least one. That's one less horror in the world. Okay, I don't. I don't have time to wait. We'll press the switch, and that will cause the walls to lower down. With all the lost souls on the left and right. We won't go any further than this, because that will. That's level progression with the health bonuses. By the way, there is the yellow key here, but we can't grab it. Now in the hallway of armor bonuses, that's where we want to be. It does seem to lead to a dead end, but this gargoyle wall is lower than the others. You can open it and get an energy cell pack. The item counts as the secret as I believe all the secrets in this map. So up here, when you step to the health bonus area, it will cause more lost souls to appear near where the yellow key is. I just like to stay here and snipe them off by the yellow key. Now we'll get the trail of health bonuses if we can without losing all of the luscious blueberry juice in our veins. Press the switch and you can gain access to the yellow skull key. I like to use my chainsaw here on the specters. Conveniently, as if no effort was made, there's the yellow door with more specters. I like how they are fully 
non-camouflaged when you step in the room, but then when they see you, they're like, oh crap, camouflage active, and they go into their specter state. I find that really cool, a neat touch. There's more specters up here. Anyway, down below here, I really love this water. I don't know why I do, it just looks so pure, so blue, so drinkable. Anyways, there it is, everybody. The BFG 9000, and you even get an achievement if you pick it up. But we can't get it because the step is too high. We also can't go up here to level progression because the step is too high. So we'll climb the water steps. Look at this gargoyle face. It's opening and closing its eyes. So if you use it, the BFG is now accessible. But let's have the BFG ready for three Mancubi. That is so luscious. I love the BFG in this game, but I also love the Unmaker just as much. So over here, this will cause two barons to spawn in the water pit. So what I do is I go back and use the rocket launcher on them from here. Just snipe at their kneecaps. And you'll eventually cripple them into submission. Oh wow, that's interesting. Look at that, his corpse disappears completely. It's magical Baron Corpse. Anyway, in the water pit where they were, press the switch, use the teleporter, and that switch will actually allow you access to the level progression ledge, where we can press another switch. Switches and doors, switches and doors, that's what makes Doom fun. So we'll go back through the yellow door, through this door. You hear all that carnage that spawned? Oh yes, we're gonna have lots of fun. So what I do is I just stand back and just launch rockets right in front of me at all the enemies who are in front of me. And then once you're satisfied with the number of corpses, you can switch to whatever weapon you want to use, in my case, the Unmaker, and just snipe off the big boys to the left and right. And then we'll just use either the chain gun, super shotgun, or regular shotgun on all the remainder of the enemies that we come across. Because they can, they can hide in these little nooks, making you miss 100% kills. So, it would be a good idea to circle a couple of times around. Also, I am going to grab the chain gun bullets that I may need. And that's it. I think everybody is now dead. Back in the starting room, of all places, we have four exit switches. It doesn't matter which one you press. They all take you to the same exit and the same next map. Alright, so that was the bleeding. In one of my practice runs, I actually missed a kill. It was my very first practice run. And I suspect he was an enemy that was in the final arena fight. Somehow I missed him, and somehow I didn't hear audio cues that he was still alive. So, you know, with no, like, there's, there's no monster count. You can't see the number of enemies left in Doom 64. You have to go to the end tally screen to be able to see if you have everything, but by then the map is over and you can't go back, so... 
I'm glad I got 100% here. This map is really interesting. It's It's got a couple of arena fights with Mancubi and stuff like that, but other than that, there's not much else to say about it. I like the water effect. I think it's really well designed. It just looks pure and refreshing. And then you just have the occasional skirmish. A couple of barons here in the water pit. Um, the Lost Soul yellow key area can be troublesome sometimes. The Lost Souls are really fast in Doom 64, so they can whittle your health down really quickly. That's why I wanted to stay there and lure the Lost Souls down into where I was, but they were being stubborn, and so they ended up hitting me a few times because I wasn't patient enough to wait for them because I don't have time to wait. Anyways, that was the bleeding... We will move on to Terror Core in the next video, so stay tuned for that. I'm Big Mac Davis here, and we'll be back with more Doom 64 goodness next time. Take care, everybody.